the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcome. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This is a final video on an introduction to orthogonal sets for linear algebra students. You should have watched my videos on the definition and concepts of orthogonal sets and orthogonal bases and an introduction to orthogonal projections. That topic actually will be expanded to its own group of videos uh, that are actually scheduled to be my next set of videos. So we go deeper into that topic. But before we get there, we have to have a discussion about orthogonal matrices. Once you hit the matrix part of this topic, it is actually kind of easier stuff. It's really nice to go through. So let's talk about orthogonal matrices. What is an orthogonal matrix? Well, I'm glad I asked. A square invertible matrix U having the property that U inverse is equal to U transpose is called an orthogonal matrix. Right now, you do not know why. Why would you call that an orthogonal matrix? It totally doesn't make sense to me, right? Well, for right now, we're just gonna say, if you have a matrix, obviously a square matrix because it's invertible. If you have a square matrix such that U inverse or the matrix inverse is equal to the matrix transpose, we're gonna reserve the phrase orthogonal matrix for that style of matrix. Before we go into why that, that is called an orthogonal matrix, let's go ahead and just take an example. Let's show that this matrix right here is an orthogonal matrix. Now remember, to be an orthogonal matrix, the inverse of this matrix has to equal the transpose of this matrix. Now here's the trick. You do not wanna take the inverse of this matrix. It's just pretty terrible if you want to do that. You're more than welcome to, but I don't want to. Because if U inverse equals U transpose, then you can multiply both sides on the left by U to get that product right there. So all I need to really do is show that U times U transpose is equal to the identity matrix, and I'm pretty much done. By the way, you could have right multiplied both sides by U as well. It doesn't actually matter. You pick your poison and do whichever one you want to do. So let's go ahead and write down U and U transpose here. All right, we have those written down. By the way, something you should probably notice, these matrices are ugly, right? U itself is a very ugly looking matrix. There's a specific reason for that, which we'll discover in a few minutes when we get into the theorems in this section or in this video. But let's go ahead and take the product of these two matrices. Now I wrote out all the arithmetic behind the scenes uh, just so you can see where I got everything from. Let's go ahead and add things up here. And I took my time with it actually just to make sure I didn't make any arithmetic mistakes in my multiplications. But there you go. We got U times U transpose equaling the identity matrix. U is a square matrix and so therefore U is invertible because the product of U against another square matrix is an, the identity matrix. So therefore, if U times U transpose is equal to I, then U inverse is equal to U transpose, and by definition, U is an orthogonal matrix. Now, there's nothing right now that I've implied that is special about having an orthogonal matrix, other than the fact that the matrix inverse is equal to its transpose, which by itself is kind of interesting. However, as is usually the case, once we get to the theorems, that's where the interesting information about that definition comes into play. So if we have a non-square matrix, or maybe I shouldn't say non-square, if we have a matrix U that is M by N, that is, it doesn't necessarily need to be square, well, U will have orthonormal columns, that is, they're orthogonal and they are of unit length, their norms are all one, if and only if U transpose times U is equal to the identity matrix. Now that U transpose times U should look familiar because if U is square, which is not the case necessarily with this theorem, but if U is square, that would imply that U is called an orthogonal matrix. However, this statement right here is, U has orthonormal columns if and only if U transpose times U is equal to the identity matrix. Now I find this to be somewhat of a fascinating theorem 
because it's telling us that you have a matrix square or not and you take its transpose and multiply it against the matrix if it becomes the identity matrix you know something about the matrix itself all those columns of that matrix have to be not only orthogonal to one another but they must have a norm of one each of them all right so let's talk about the proof itself the first thing we're going to need to do is let u sub i be the ith column of u. That's going to be very important because we want to start talking about the transpose of u and what the product of u transpose times u is. In fact, let me write it off to the side. And as you can see right here, if u sub 1, u sub 2, all the way to u sub n are the columns of u, then u sub 1 transpose is the first row of u transpose u sub 2 transpose is the first or the second row of u transpose and so on and so forth down the line and when you take the product of u transpose times u remember the entries in that product are the products of the rows and columns of u transpose and u respectively that is the very first entry row one column one of the ending product there is going to be row one of u transpose times column one of u row two column one of the final product is row two of u transpose times column one of u and so on and so forth throughout that matrix now by definition each of those products u transpose times u are the dot products this guy right here is u1 dotted with u1. This is u sub 1 dotted with u sub 2. And all of those patterns continue throughout. So therefore, the ijth entry of u transpose u is u sub i dot u sub j. However, we know something very special about u. And by the way, now that I'm saying this out loud, I'm realizing that I'm just proving this in one direction. So I'm just going forward. It is an if and only if, but I happen to be proving it forward. That is, I'm going to assume that U has orthonormal columns. Well, the fact is, if U has orthonormal columns, the columns are orthogonal. And since the columns are orthogonal, then the dot product of any of those two vectors is going to be zero unless those two vectors are the same vectors. That is, in this final product here, everywhere where the indices are not the same, those dot products will be zero. Moreover, since we're assuming we're arguing forward, right? We're assuming that U has orthonormal columns. That means that when U sub I is dotted with itself, that dot product will be one. Because again, the size of those vectors are one, or in other words, the norm of those vectors are one. And u sub i dotted with u sub i, or u sub i dotted with u sub j when i is equal to j, is the actual norm of the vector squared. But the norm of the vector is one, so squaring that is still one. Thus, when you zero everything else except for the main diagonal, and you only have ones along the main diagonal, that means u transpose times u is equal to the identity matrix. And I didn't write the second way, but or the backwards argument, the only if part argument, the argument that goes this way. However, I could probably argue it using language pretty quickly. Suppose that u transpose times u is equal to the identity matrix. Well, again, looking at what u transpose times u is, it's this mess right here, which I've written out. If it's the identity matrix, we then know that the dot product of u sub i and u sub j has to be zero unless i is equal to j and that dot product will be one. And that happens if, first of all, the columns are orthogonal. And second of all, if the size of each of those columns is one or the norm of each of those columns vectors is one. So I guess I could have argued this as an if and only if, honestly, because that implies immediately that U has orthonormal columns. So it is an if and only if, I could have argued it that way. I just didn't write it down that way. Sorry about that. But this isn't actually the punchline that I want to get to. I'd like to get to the one where we have a square matrix. Now imagine if this was a square matrix. So if you replaced M with N. So suppose you have a square matrix that has orthonormal columns. 
Well, that's true if and only if u transpose u is equal to i, but that's true if and only if u is orthogonal. It's an orthogonal matrix. And that's exactly what the next theorem states. And I'm not gonna slowly reveal the proof this time because I just spoke it out loud, but a square matrix is orthogonal if and only if it has orthonormal columns. You can read the proof down below. U is orthogonal if and only if U inverse equals U transpose, right? That's the definition of an orthogonal matrix. But that's true if and only if the identity matrix is U transpose times U. But that's true by the last theorem if and only if U has orthonormal columns. And that is exactly why our very first example in this video, which was that of an orthogonal matrix, had terrible looking columns because the size or the norm of each of those columns is one. They have to be for it to be an orthogonal matrix. You didn't know it at the time, but take the norms of each of these columns and I promise they are all one. And in fact, that's exactly what my next example is. Verify that each of the columns has a norm of one. And there we have it. It's very fast to show, nothing big about it. Now we're about to end out this video. It's not very much to this material. We just need to get the language down, what an orthogonal matrix is. By the way, very sad that it's called an orthogonal matrix when in reality it should be called an orthonormal matrix because not only are the columns orthogonal, but they're orthonormal. But unfortunately, the language is what it is. Everybody calls them orthogonal matrices, even though they are orthonormal, the columns are. So let's round it out with a theorem and an example. Let U be an M by N matrix with orthonormal columns. If U was square, by the way, then we could say that it's an orthogonal matrix, but because U is not square, we can't use that word. And we'll let X and Y be vectors in RN. Then the following are true. The norm of the matrix U times X is actually just the norm of X. This has something to do, obviously, with the fact that the magnitudes of the columns of U are one. But as I wrote down below here, these proofs are generally left as homework exercises. So I am not going to do any of these because they're nice enough that they can be done by a student in homework. Likewise, UX dotted with UY is just X dotted with Y. Again, you have orthonormal columns and a lot of special things happen. And I've been trying to pitch this to you as we've gone through these, these recent videos to say, hey, look, I would really love it if we had a set of basis vectors for our space that were orthogonal and possibly even orthonormal. That is, they all have norms of one because very special things happen if that's the case. Finally, ux dotted with uy is equal to zero if and only if x dot y is equal to zero. So essentially, when you're working with a matrix with orthonormal columns, it takes part of your work away. I mean, seriously, just imagine that somebody comes in and says, man, I got to find the magnitude of this matrix times this vector. Oh, by the way, the matrix has orthonormal columns. Well, then you could just say, oh yeah, it's just the magnitude of the vector. Or same thing. I need to find the dot product of this matrix times X versus the same matrix times Y where the matrix has orthonormal columns. Well, it's just a dot product of X and Y. Same thing down here, right? So there is some very beautiful, or sorry, there are some very beautiful results when you're working with matrices that have orthonormal columns. I highly recommend that you work with matrices with orthonormal columns when you can. The one bad thing about working with matrices with orthonormal columns is that they tend to have radicals. And that's just because of the fact that the columns have a norm of one. And that's hard to get without having radicals involved. So let's finish this out with an example. Show that U transpose times U is equal to the identity matrix. That's just going to be a multiplication. We actually technically don't really have to do it, but I'll go ahead and just do it really quickly here. There we have it. That's been verified. Not too bad. By the way, I would say check to see if those columns are orthonormal, but the fact that we took the product and it became the identity matrix, the product of U transpose U, by the way, and it became the identity matrix, we have now shown that the columns are orthonormal. 
I could have done this problem differently. I could have said, well, let's take a look at those columns, make sure they're orthogonal to one another, and then look at the norm of each of those columns. If they norm out to be one each and they're orthogonal, then I know the columns are orthonormal, which means by theorem six, a couple pages ago, that u transpose times u must equal i. But I didn't do that, so oh well. Now let's go ahead and take the norm of u times x to showcase that's actually the norm of x. Well, let's start by just looking at the norm of x. Okay, so we get a square root of five on that. Now let's take a look at the norm of u times x. Yep, they are exactly the same. So there you go, not too bad. Again, the use of this material will become more apparent later on, but for right now, we're just getting used to these ideas. All right, I hope this is enough to get you started on your work in linear algebra, at least in this material, and I hope to see you in future videos. Have a wonderful day and be a wonderful human being. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close. Don't talk too much. That isn't cold. Sure, you may really hurt inside It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry